everybody and welcome back to Planet Zoo. I am Twinkly Tanya and I have another Twinkly tutorial for you today. You see this beautiful piece of flat land? We're completely gonna ruin it because we're gonna go over all the terrain tools over here. Um, we On the left here we have uh, four different menus and of course we will start with the first because that makes the most sense. The sculpting menu. The sculpting menu is this menu over here in which you can see all the buttons that you can use to manipulate the terrain. Let's start with the first one, which is pulling, which basically creates the hills and mountains and bumps like this. You just click and drag and um, it will pull up the terrain. And it does it really fast uh, right now. So for that, you might want to um, tweak the intensity. Uh, if, we go if we go to 30, you see that it goes much, much slower. And also we can tweak the size over here. Now it is set to 20, which is the biggest size. But we can also set it to, let's say, 7, which is a so much smaller size. It, like, nothing even seems to happen. But I, I assure you it does. See, we can zoom in and see. Let's go back to an intensity of, like, you know, well, 50 maybe. That's a good uh, moderate intensity, I guess. There we go. Uh, we pull up the terrain like that. Now for the pulling, it matters in which direction your circle is located. Um, for example, if we have our circle in a complete horizontal state like this and we are not moving it, it will completely pull the terrain up like that. You get a nice bump like that. Um, if we have it completely vertical, can I even do that at this point? Almost. <laughs> Uh, my mountain isn't high enough, but this is somewhat vertical. It will push, uh, or it will pull it forward. Sorry, we were pulling. It will pull it completely forward. And then there's everything in between. So you see how the direction of the, or the angle of this circle changes. Um, that is basically the direction you're pulling your land in. So pay attention to that. Then there is the second button, which is pushing, which does exactly what it says. It pushes the terrain. And uh, like the pull button, the angle of the circle is important. So if we have it horizontal like that, it will make a hole like that. And if we have it somewhat more vertical like this, it will just push a hole forwards, which can be quite useful for caves, perhaps. Then we have these two buttons, which are quite alike. We have flatten to foundation and flatten to surface. They are very much alike, but they have one very important difference. Let's first go to flatten to foundation. This button makes everything flat. Also, I want a bigger size. <laughs> this button makes everything flat again. Let's say I don't want this bump here. All I have to do is um, have my mouse cursor in a place where I think like, yeah, that's the right height for my land. So over here. I will click and I will drag and this will completely disappear. It also works for, um, for well, holes like that. If I'm like, oh, I don't want a hole in my mountain. I will just do this and it will become completely flat. Now, uh, the height that it chooses is the height uh, where your cursor is on the moment that you click your left mouse button. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if I click it here, it will everything... It will make everything flat uh, un up until that point. If I click it higher, like here, it will make a higher um, plateau, I suppose. Like so. Um, there's also flatten to surface. And in a way, it does the same. If I hold it over here and I, I just drag my mouse, um, it gets rid of the mountain and it seems to flatten the land. If I hold it here it seems to make the plateau bigger. I mean, it does. <laughs> it does make the plateau bigger. But there is a very important difference. If I if I click flatten to found, uh, foundation, you see that the direction or the angle of the circle never changes. It's always completely horizontal. But if I have flattened to surface on, you see that the circle moves around in a certain angle. So with this one, I can also create slopes if i move it in an angle like this so like this is horizontal but i just move it slightly in an angle and i click and drag we will create a slope like so which can be very useful if you want to um, help animals out of a pond 
if you if you want to make a slope and you want to make sure that they can climb out of the pond or if you want to make a slope for your keepers to go in and out of a habitat that might be lower or higher than um, than the uh, the rest of the land then you could create slopes with flattened to surface very easily uh, then we have chisel over here which well makes a complete flat circle i'm just clicking and uh <laughs> holding the left mouse button as you can see it makes a circle exactly the size of the circle that uh that we see here and uh, well this might be a little bit big but maybe you want to uh chisel apart from a mountain uh over here and you can do it like this um, of course, you could also use flatten to surface for that, but this one actually pushes um, it pushes it back. It pushes the land back, whereas flatten to surface wouldn't do that. It it would do this, and you you get weird bumps there because it tries to flatten everything. And with the chisel, that that didn't happen. So yeah, play play around with those, and uh, and see what you can create. Uh, then we have smooth and roughen as well. Um, now, the smooth button, for example, will be very useful in a place like this. You see that the land looks a little bit weird here. There's corners in it and everything, and that's not how nature looks. So <laughs> for that, you would press the smooth button over here. And you would just go over it, and it smoothens it all out. Uh, you can also um, have it a little bit less intense because you saw that it went really really fast and we almost lost the whole the whole thing over here now see it, it keeps on smoothening it until well um, we don't even have a dent anymore <laughs> uh, we can also do that here this is this is something I use mostly when I'm creating ponds and rivers and such, and I, I'm creating that uh, I, I'm using this button at the sides of the riverbanks, for example, and the ponds, because if you don't, your water will look funky at the sides. Promise me, <laughs> uh, I promise you. Sorry. <laughs> um, then we also have roughen, which does the exact opposite, obviously, um, because it makes the terrain rougher. Uh, so, if, for example, a mountain doesn't look like this, right? This is a nice plateau, but if you really want to create a rocky mountain, for example, you could use roughen to create bumps and dents and weird parts. Look, 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 look at this. Um, it just get, it all gets rougher and more worn out, I suppose. So... That's a very useful tool if you want to create natural-looking mountains, I suppose. There we go. And if you made a mistake, because I don't know, this part looks a little bit too rough. You could either use smooth, and uh, there it goes. Or you could push and push it back a little bit. So all these tools together um, may make for great mountains and ponds and stuff. Um, the flatten to foundation button I use for, for ponds and rivers a lot. Let's say you could push a tiny bit over here. And uh, let's say like, okay, we um, we want everything to be this exact height. Uh, we could keep pushing, and that's what I did before. <laughs> and it creates a pond, but it has different heights and everything. And it, it just... It, sometimes that, that's not the best look, so you might want to use flatten to foundation, especially if you want to create rivers. We just flatten to foundation, we click here, and we just follow a path over here, and there we go. We create a very, very nice river. And like I said, the, the bumps over here and, and over here, um, those I will just uh, make, make them go away with uh, a smooth button, like so. Now, there's also scenery lock and surface lock over here. We went over intensity and size, but we have some more stuff over here. We have scenery lock and surface lock. Um, now, what scenery lock is supposed to do <laughs> if you turn it on, because it doesn't work for me. It doesn't. I have seen other people do it, <laughs> so I know what it is supposed to do. It just doesn't work in my game. I don't know why. Or maybe it just only worked in beta. And it doesn't work now anymore. I don't know. Let me know if it works for you. But what it's supposed to do is if I were to pull some terrain here. Let's actually make my, my circle a little bit bigger. If I were to pull here and there's there's some scenery. So there's like a tree here. 
And if I were to pull here, it would actually not pull the terrain <clears throat> uh, through the tree. Um, actually, I'm now thinking that it might be because I have some settings enabled. Let's see if that's the case. Um, because I have disabled scenery and terrain collision. If I turn those off, let's see if it works then. <laughs> Maybe that was my deal. Let's see if it now actually works. Let's see. Oh my god, this goes very slow. Let's <laughs> pull up the intensity and the size. Let's see. Oh, now it works. Okay, so it was because of my settings. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> if you have, I think, both terrain and scenery collision, probably scenery collision, if you have turned those, if you don't have a mark there, uh, then it leaves the tree perfectly intact, like this. Um, and uh, whereas if I don't have my scenery lock on, or if I have those settings differently, <laughs> it will actually bury the tree into the, into the, into the scenery, like, uh, into the terrain, sorry, like that. It also works the other way around. If we push it, then it will also... Well, let's actually try that here. So if we push it here, then it will actually leave a little bit of land around. Well, not now, because I don't have it enabled. <laughs> Never mind. We'll go to this tree. <laughs> see. Now you can see. It actually leaves a little piece of land around the tree. So, yes. <laughs> uh, use this to your own uh, advantage or not. So... I have in my settings, um, I have um, uh, scenery collision and terrain collision. Um, I have I have a mark there to disable that. And actually track collision should also be disabled. Because then that gives me a little bit more freedom in my game, I feel. Uh, but then scenery lock won't work. <laughs> uh, surface lock does a different thing. Where's my mountain? I want to go back to my mountain. There we go. This is a mountain. I'm, I'm Dutch. <laughs> you know the drill. So, um, surface lock. Well, let's actually create more of a because uh, let's let's create more of um, more of a mountain here to with more slopes. Okay, surface lock. Let's make it a little bit uh, smaller as well. There we go. Um, surface lock makes sure that um, I can pull the terrain in whatever direction I want it to without this circle actually moving because if I if I pull the terrain right now and I start here but I'm moving it around um, oh wait I already have it enabled see so if I if I don't have it enabled um, my circle will just go in all directions as you can see but if I have surface lock enabled, and I hold this, for example, in this angle. And I will just move my mouse around everywhere. You see that the circle doesn't move an inch. Well, it, it, the angle of the circle doesn't move. So you can... Um, yeah, sometimes maybe you want to pull in an, in an exact direction. Or push in an exact direction. If you want to push it vertically like that. And we want to create a cave, maybe. Um, we, we, we hold it vertically... And now we can just push the earth completely back without um, changing the direction and everything. So that's what surface lock does. Now for the paint, um, I will come back later when we have uh, covered the painting section over here. Hi uh, highlight hidden barriers is basically... Let's, let's actually... Th th um, that uh, goes uh, together with the null barrier over here because that is the barrier that we don't see. Um, I will also make a barrier tutorial, so I will go over that in more detail. But let's just have a null barrier. This this only works with a null barrier over here. Um, right now, it highlights all the null barriers. So even if we had a null barrier very far away, like we can we can go as far away as we want to, and we can s still see the barrier. But maybe you only want to see it when you are close. So we click nearby, then it seems to be hidden. Uh, until, well, until our mouse, actually, <laughs> um, is near the barrier. So it, it doesn't really matter what the camera does. As long as our mouse is near a barrier, it will show. Which is quite handy if you want to um, uh, shape the terrain just only inside of a habitat or only outside of a habitat. And then uh, we can also turn it off completely, in which case you will never see the barrier. And I have no clue why you would want this while you are working on your terrain. 
maybe you can find a reason. I don't know. I would just either have it always on or on nearby. Um, that just makes the most sense to me personally. But um, this is what it does. Now, let's actually get rid of that barrier if we can. Can we? We don't need that any longer. Okay, now there's uh, there's some other menus over here as well. We have the terrain stamp tool over here. Um, and we have four shapes over here. And uh, let's, let's start with the cube. Uh, we can place perfectly shaped cubes like this just by clicking, left clicking on your mouse. And uh, you can make some uh, perfect plateaus um, by that. And we can make it uh, as high as we want. Uh, we can make it bigger also or smaller if we want to like so and we could even change the angle uh, like we do in um, regular building and if you uh, are unfamiliar with uh, the building um, then go to my building tutorial but now if we press x twice we can we come in this um, uh, this menu over here and we can change in all the directions that we like like so uh, we also have a sphere we have a cylinder and we have a pyramid and uh, those can all change directions and size and everything. Now the best feature in this whole thing over here is the fill option because right now the fill option is enabled and it makes um, it makes uh, the shapes <laughs> um, at the outside of the terrain, if that makes sense, uh, you will actually create the shapes on your terrain. Whereas if we uh, make that mark go away, you see that it changes. Uh, let's actually go to cube. Um, we will actually create the shape inside of the terrain. So now we could make perfect circles if we want to make a little pool for our animals. Let's make the height a little bit less high. There we go. We have a nice little pool or a pond for the animals to swim in. Of course, you have to make sure that you will create a slope there so that they can actually get in and out. But <laughs> this is how you could do it. There we go. Perfect pools. And you can use all these shapes. Now, what what you could also do and <laughs> is um, hold shift and um, drag it up. Well, let's actually fill again. Uh, drag it up and... Um, we could uh, place these things in mid-air if we wanted to. So you could create the whole solar system if you wanted to. Uh, oops, I didn't want to actually get out of the terrain. Um, so yeah, and again, we have the uh, highlight hidden barriers option here as well. Uh, same as in the other menu. Then we go to painting and we see all the uh, paints that we have. Uh, they don't all show. We, we, just, we can just scroll down to see them. But if you just want to see them on one page, you can use this button over here which makes them smaller, but you can see all of them in one page. Maybe at some point we will get more with DLCs. Who knows? <laughs> and then this might actually be uh, very useful. Uh, we have two pieces of grass, short and long. We have two pieces of soil, light and heavy. We have smooth rock and rough rock. We have fine sand and coarse sand. And we have snow. The snow only has one, uh, one style. <laughs> and then we have auto paint. Um, now, I, I think most of you are already quite familiar with this because this is basically what you need if you want to make your animals happy, right? Uh, every animal has different needs. But um, what it basically does is paint your land. So if we want to uh, create a river and we're like, well, grass does not grow uh, on the inside of a river, we can just say, like, what do we want? Maybe soil. And we will just create a soil at the bottom of the river. Or we want to have our mountains indeed way more rocky. Well, it's not rough anymore, but <laughs> we um, we can just create rocks all over these mountains. Now, the trick with this, though, is to, um, to really play around with intensity and size and to layer things. Um, because... Um, especially with the with the animals needs and all with everything uh, just to make it look pretty right now we have we have I think short grass long grass we have long grass over here um, let's make that short <laughs> because well that's basically what all animals want right but 
see if we if we have some short grass over here and then for example we um we will put some fine sand over or we'll, maybe we will start with soil let's see how the world is actually layered <laughs> so maybe we'll start with some soil maybe there's some soil all over the grass and then there's maybe some sand as well uh, i now have the intensity on 100 percent, so it absolutely doesn't work what i want to show you now it does though See, I'm going over this with long grass, but you still see the soil over here. You still see the sand. It's because the intensity is brought down, so it will not paint everything at once. It will just paint and mix with the um, with the, the things that are already underneath. And this you could use to your advantage and make things look so much more natural by really blending all these things in. Instead of just creating weird blotches of soil or whatever um if you want a more in-depth tutorial about how to blend these in a in a natural way then let me know i could totally do one for now i'm just telling you that that's um <laughs> that that's an option um and um there's there's another neat trick that you can do with um with this let's say uh we have sand enabled over here now, if I go back to sculpting, um, there's one thing that I haven't covered, which is the paint over here. We have auto paint right now. So if we push, uh, it just means that it respects what was already here, um, which is grass. Uh, so even if I if I were to push um, well, in, over here, it will also turn back to grass because the grass was already here before um, now if i go into that menu and um, click on use selected it will actually use the thing that i have selected in my painting menu in this case sand if i go to sculpting and i will push you will see that i will create a little uh, pool of sand right there now there's a third option over here um, which is sampled and that means that it will actually use whatever is there so for example in one of these uh, holes uh, it, it, it turned back to grass right before uh, but now it will actually respect what is here now and uh, this will stay soil um, if I if I click here it will stay grass because that's what here what's here now if I click here it will stay sand because that is what is here now so you can totally use this to your advantage, for example, when creating mountains or when creating a river like that, for example, and you're like, okay, I don't want this to be grass from the start. I know that I want my river to have a bottom of soil or a bottom of rocks. Then just select uh, whatever you want it to be over here. And then, for example, let's have a rocky mountain. So we, we select the rough rock. Uh, we make the intensity a little bit higher and the size, and we just pull up uh no <laughs> we have to also use selected obviously and we will just pull up a rocky mountain like that so that's a neat thing to um to know actually i think and then the last one is water over here and let's go back to our uh dents that we made here because these would make for perfect pools now usually uh, smoothen this out because this will look a little bit weird but we have uh, two two types of water we have calm water over here and we have rough water over here uh, and as you can see well you can see it better this way the calm water doesn't move at all it's just still water there's a little bit of a ripple but not much uh, the rough water actually looks like well let's actually play because it actually moves a little bit so you can use this uh, in rivers, for example, or in larger bodies of water. Whereas I would use this one in a small pool or a small pond. Uh, there you go. And uh, for some reason, we could uh, we can also uh, change the lake cleanliness. So if for, for whatever weird reason you want dirty water, there you go. You have some dirty water over there. <laughs> Don't know why you would want to, but there it is. Uh, let's get rid of it because it's ugly. <laughs> now, you can see that um, this suddenly has turned into rock. Uh, whereas first it was soil. That's because uh, this one also has the same thing that we just discussed. 
um, it uses the uh, selector thing and I have still selected my rough rock so it will turn the bottom into stone uh, now we could also do auto paint um, in which case <laughs> I still have dirty water in which case it um, well it it creates um, soil because that was what was there before um, and I could also uh, whoops I could also do sampled which um, turns it well in is sort of a similar thing right now because that's uh, that's what this uh, what it wants but um, yeah <laughs> um, when I do that over here it um, see it, it totally respects what is here now so sampled is just taking whatever is here now which in this case is grass and some rocks over here there we go if I and uh, by, by the way by um, right clicking I will remove the water and by left clicking I will place the water so if I want uh, the soil back I will go to auto paint and there we go we have the soil back so we can play around with that as well uh, let's make the lake clean again also now very important to know is it matters um, where you put your mouse cursor you see this blue line um, if I drag my mouse down the line is lower and even lower and if I click here the water will be very very low whereas if I click it right here the water will be all the way up to the top and then of course there's uh, if, if it's too high it says that it is obstructed sometimes you will also see a red line and then you cannot place it at all how many ever however many times you click um, so that is the water right there and uh, right click to remove it again um, I uh, or actually there's also this tool which you can click or this button which you can click and then you can left click but actually that's more buttons to click so I usually just right click but if you have if you forgot about that key then there's always this uh, this button over here so that basically covers all the basics of terrain um, we could totally go into more depth um, but not in this tutorial because I think this is already um, uh, of a very uh, respectable length uh, but if there is anything you want to know more about if there's anything in in the terrain things that you're struggling with then let me know or just anything in general because um, I am totally up for making tutorials for you guys on topics that you want to know more about so just let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to cover and I will uh, make sure to uh, to try at least and uh, let me know um, what you thought of this one and if it helped in any way I hope it did if it did then um, maybe subscribe because I am doing more tutorials I'm also um, there there are some tutorials on the channel already there's a path tutorial right now and a building tutorial and uh, there will be many many more in the future um, I also do a playthrough of career mode at the moment and um, I'm doing some speed builds so um, uh, yeah make sure to uh, to follow me if you want to uh, uh, see those as well and I will see you in the next episode have a very lovely amazing day and stay twinkly